Hello, and welcome to an episode of EOS Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. In this video, I'm going to explain RAID. No, not the bug spray. People have been writing in to me asking me what RAID is or what it does. RAID is an acronym for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, a method of accessing multiple individual disks as if they were one larger disk spreading data access over these multiple disks, thereby reducing the risk of losing all data if one drive fails. And it improves access times. They are commonly found in large file servers, transaction of application servers, where data accessibility is critical and fault tolerance is required. RAID is also finding its way into desktop PCs for CAD, which is computer assisted drawing, multimedia editing, playback that requires higher data transfer rates, and so on. RAID can either be built into the motherboard or installed as an expansion card such as PCI or PCI Express. Because RAID uses storage virtualization technology, regardless of the number of hard drives used, the OS will only, or the operating system, will only see one hard drive. Data is distributed across the drives in one of several ways called RAID levels, depending on what level of redundancy and performance is required. There are six standard levels and three hybrid levels, each level providing a different balance between data reliability and input output performance. RAID will be listed as a word with a number that identifies the level. RAID requires a minimum of two hard disk drives, where some levels require four or more drives. Now, I will only be discussing the basic or the most commonly used levels in desktop PCs. The first one we have is RAID 0. Now, RAID 0 isn't really a RAID at all. It's not. It's got no redundancy, no tolerance, no nothing. It performs what is called block striping across multiple drives. The data is fragmented or broken up into blocks and alternated or striped among the drives. This level increases the data transfer rate and data storage since the controller can access the hard disk drives simultaneously. However, this level has no redundancy. If a single drive fails, the entire array becomes inaccessible. The more drives in the array, the higher the data transfers, but higher risks of a failure. Next, we have RAID Level 1. With RAID Level 1, the drives are mirrored, meaning all the drives in the array are identical or copies of, them, of one another. It's like copying the drive on the fly. The system will still function as long as one drive is operational. This level doesn't improve performance, but rather a peace of mind should a drive fail. The controller would direct the OS to the working drive without disruption. This is because in multiple drive arrays like RAID, the OS is only seeing one drive. Now only two hard disk drives are required and additional drives are optional. If each hard disk drive in level 1 has its own controller and the appropriate operating system support, you could increase the read performance with minimum write performance reduction. This method is, uh, is known as duplexing or multiplexing when you're using more than two hard drives. RAID Level 5 provides a high tolerance to disk failures and protection of data which makes it popular among users. It stripes data similar to Level 0. 
but adds parity data that is distributed across the disk array. The parity data is used to correct any errors that may develop due to a drive failure. The disadvantage to this level is the need to read two times and write two times per data block, which can decrease system performance. A worst case scenario would be the RAID write hole. If a drive doesn't complete a write cycle due to a drive failure or a power outage, the parity is not updated. When the data on the faulty drive is rebuilt, the parity will be incorrect causing data errors. The RAID can function with one drive down with reduced performance until the faulty drive is replaced. A minimum of three drives are required. Now we're going to talk about hybrid levels. With hybrid RAID levels, you are using a combination of two levels. RAID 1 plus 0, also known as RAID 10, are mirrored sets in a striped set, which requires a minimum of four drives, even number of drives. It provides fault tolerance and improved performance, but increases complexity. The key difference from RAID 0 plus 1, which I'll explain in a moment, is that RAID 1 plus 0 creates a striped set from a series of mirrored drives. The array can sustain multiple drive losses so long as no mirror loses all of its drives. With RAID 0 plus 1, you have a striped set in a mirrored set that provides fault tolerance and improved performance, but increases complexity. You can use three drives because RAID 1 will mirror the data as a whole, but it is more common to use four or more drives as long as there is an even number of drives. The key difference from RAID 1 0 is that RAID 0 plus 1 creates a second striped set to mirror a primary striped set. The array continues to operate with one or more drive failures in the same mirror set, but if drives fail on both primary hard drive and its mirrored hard drive, the data on the RAID system is lost. Using RAID as a secondary storage is not an alternative to backing up data. In parity configuration, a RAID, protect from, a RAID protects from catastrophic data loss caused by physical damage or errors on a single drive within the array. However, a true backup system has other important features, such as the ability to restore an earlier version of data, which is needed both to protect against software errors that write unwanted data to secondary storage and also to recover from user error and maculous data deletion. RAID can be overwhelmed by catastrophic failure that exceeds its recovery capacity and the entire array is at risk of physical damage by fire, natural disaster, and human forces. While backups can be stored off-site, a RAID is also vulnerable to controller failure because it is not always possible to migrate a RAID to a new, different controller without data loss. Finally, some motherboards also support JBOD, just a bunch of disks. JBOD is not part of RAID, but does use multiple drives. JBOD combines all the drives into one virtual drive. When the first drive fills up, JBOD starts with the next drive, and so on. To the OS, there's only one drive. JBOD will resize all the drives to the smallest drive's capacity in the array. For example, if the smallest hard disk drive's capacity in the array is 100 gigabytes, then the remaining hard disk drives will also be configured for 100 gigabytes, even if a drive in the array is 120 gigabytes. Then you multiply 100 gigabytes by the number of drives in the array to get your total capacity. 
Well, this is a basic understanding of RAID. I hope this pro this episode was helpful. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.